Welcome and happy Monday, guys. We have an early five game slate to talk about here. We got three games at two o'clock, one at 2.30 and one at 3 p.m. Central. If you guys are new, my name is DK. Uh, again, I make content for NBA Daily Fantasy Sports as well as for NFL Daily Fantasy Sports and for player prop sites like Prize Picks. Prize Picks, they are the sponsor of this video. If you guys are not familiar, again, you build two, three, four, five, up to six player props and up to 25 bucks your money. So make sure to use the code DKDFS for 100% match up to $100. I'll have it linked down below. That's basically a free $100 to play with on the site. And if you're looking for uh, premium content, my Patreon is also linked down below. But let's just get right into this video. So we'll start off with uh, the Pelican side. And uh, we know no Zion still, no Brandon Ingram. Herbert Jones' status is up in the air. So we'll start with CJ McCollum, 9.6. I don't love the matchup for CJ, but he's their clear go-to guy right now with Ingram and was Zion off the court. So I think he's a solid tournament play. I wouldn't really call him a priority, though, on this slate. Jonas Valanciunas, kind of the same thing. Like his ceiling, he's been up and down. Um, you know, if you take a look at the last five games, 24, then 43, then 43, then 20, then 59. So, like, he's been up and down, but he is a guy that has that ceiling. You know, we've seen 40-plus from him in three of the last five games. So, like his upside, this is a bigger front court against Cleveland. So, maybe JV does play a couple more minutes. So, again, do like his ceiling as well. I think Nigel Marshall is probably your safest play right now. He's been playing a ton. I expect mid-30s minutes, whether Herbert Jones plays or not. And he's a guy that can stuff a stat sheet. So he seems like a pretty safe play. The answer is yes, I'm still on full tilt mode about this guy. I literally, I can't even begin to describe the pain, man. I played him so many times these games. Just kept going back to him. It was like, Everyone told me the group think was, oh, Trey Murphy sucks. You can't play him anymore. I was like, no, that's not true. He's just on a cold streak. And, you know, when he does go off, he's going to do it at low ownership. And then he finally did one. This was the game I finally faded him for 32 fans points. Didn't play him again. 32 fans points. So I just know if I buy into Trey Murphy, he'll bust. Um, but the Trey Murphy, I think Herb Jones is pretty big for him. If Herb Jones is out, I think it does make me feel better about Herb, uh, Trey Murphy playing 30 plus minutes. If Herb Jones is in, I'm a little bit more... I'd be a little bit more worried about uh, Murphy. His minutes wouldn't be as secure. And then Herb Jones himself, 4-5, or five, if he does play. Only fine value play should play over 30 minutes as long as he stays out of foul trouble. If he's out, you probably get Dyson Daniels in the starting lineup, 3.3. 25 minutes back-to-back -back games. I mean, he's fine. He's got the shooting guard, small forward eligibility, so it's relatively easy to get him in your lineup. And then there's a couple guys I want to mention off the bench. Alvarado's 4K. He's been seeing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 20 to 30 minutes. He's not a bad point for a guy, so I do like him. The only downside is he's only point guard eligible. And then Larry Nance, he'll play the backup five. Um, you know, he'll close a lot of the times uh, over JV. So, does have the power forward eligibility. I think he's another good uh, GPP play. Probably wouldn't get to anyone else, though, on this team. Let's move on to Cleveland. Cleveland, pretty easy to talk about. They run a tight rotation. Um, Mitchell, Garland at the top. Both these guys do have ceilings. You know, Mitchell's been kind of up and down, but the ceiling is clearly, clearly there with him. So, if you want the ceiling of the two guards, it is Donovan Mitchell. I think Garland probably is a little bit safer. He's a bit cheaper, but he's been kind of quiet of late. I mean, 38, 39, 34, 38, 23 fancy points. Still, though, playing mid-30s minutes, so I think he's playable. The front quarter, probably my favorite place here, though. Mobley and Allen. Um, Evan Mobley dealt with, like, he, yeah, he picked up a knee injury, but ended up returning. Um, that was a bit tilting because I took his over rebounds at eight. He uh, hit, hit it exactly. Still won that day on prize picks, but I was... A little bit tilting, he, he lost a whole shift there because of that. But um, I think Mobley is a relatively safe play. I don't see like a massive ceiling with him, but I like him. And I like Jared Allen too at 5'9". So um, both these guys should play mid-30s minutes. So the front court, probably my favorite place here on the Cleveland side. Lavert is 4.9. I expect somewhere around, you know, 25 to 30 minutes from him. Viable in a tournament setting. I don't love him when he's like, when this team's fully healthy. He's usually someone I get to when like one of Garland or Mitchell are out. Kevin Love is 4-3 minutes, you know, not great, 18, 18, 15, and 20. However, with Kevin Love, he is a good point-per-minute guy. So at this price point, it's, it is worth a shot in tournaments. Like, he can still go give you, like, 30 fancy points in, like, 18 minutes. Other than that, uh, Isaac Okoro, man, uh, I don't think I can stomach it. Ricky Rubio is seeing rotation minutes, and, you know, he's a good point-per-minute guy, but I don't think he's playing enough for me to consider him yet. All right, so let's move on to Toronto and New York. So with Toronto, the only news we're waiting for here is the status of Van Fleet. And if Van Fleet is out, they can go so many different ways. My guess would be that he's add one of the bigs, probably like a Chua in the starting lineup. But they could go with Chua. 
They could go Coloco. They could go Malachi Flynn. There's a lot of... They go Thad Young. There's Toronto, basically, you never know what they're going to do when one of these guys are out there because they have so many guys that they like mix and match. But assuming everyone plays, I don't think there's a standout here for Toronto. I will mention Scotty Barnes has been playing better of late. 49, 47, and 53 fans points over the last three games. But when I play Scotty Barnes to the team to himself, you better believe he's only going for 20 fancy points. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, like Siakam's been kind of quiet of late. It's it's a little bit annoying. He only has center eligibility, but I'm fine with him as a contrarian play. OG, Gary Trent are viable in the mid-range. Again, Van Fleet, if he plays, should see 35-ish minutes. Would be playable. Um, if Van Fleet misses, then we can start looking to some of these cheap guys. A Chris Boucher, 3-4, played 18 minutes last game. He's a good point per minute guy. Still, minutes would not be secure, but um, would have some interest in him. Would have some interest in Precious Chua, who played 28 minutes. So he really got the big bump there um, last game. So a Chua Boucher would probably be the guys I would get to. I mean, you might see a little bit of rotation minutes for Thad Young. Maybe Malachi Flynn plays a bit. Um, but I think it would mainly be a Chua and Boucher, the guys that would look to there. Um, if Van Fleet is out, and then just keep an eye on the starting lineup. All right, on the Knicks side, so I do like this Knicks team. I don't love the matchup for them, but I mean, this offense right now is basically just get the ball to Randall, get the ball to Brunson, and get out of the way. They are playing 40 plus minutes a night. Um, Randall just went for 71 today against Detroit, and Brunson is playing 40 minutes a night too. And uh, I'm not mad about it because I have Brunson in like all my best ball teams. So I've been very, very pleased with uh, Jalen Brunson here over the last couple of weeks, but. Yeah, Brunson, Randall, even though the matchup's not great, they are playing like 40 to 42 minutes a game. So I like them because of that reason. RJ Barrett, on the other hand, the minutes have ticked down a bit at him. He got in foul trouble a couple games ago. Only played 27 minutes there against Detroit. So I would say he is more of your contrarian play. Um, still a guy that does have a ceiling, though, and someone that you don't want to completely ignore. Quickly, you know, kind of benefited with Barrett struggling last game, played 34 minutes. But the price point is just like, yeah, feels about right. Mitchell Robinson, if he says he's out of foul trouble, probably does see mid-30s minutes. Um, but that's always a big if with him. Does have a ceiling, though. Quentin Grimes should see low-30s minutes. But again, the price point is just like, yeah, 5K, it's just a secondary play. And I don't think there's anyone I would even look to uh, off the bench besides quickly for the Knicks. Moving on to Golden State and Washington. So I was looking for news. They have Clay Thompson listed out. I'm not sure... That's right. I was looking at Twitter. I was like, I didn't see anything about that. I mean, it is a back-to-back, so he could be out, but we'll keep an eye on that. Assuming everyone plays here for Golden State, I like the matchup for them. I like the ceiling for Steph Curry. He's been kind of quiet since coming back. Um, 33, 27, 39 fancy points over the last three games, but still a guy that does have a ceiling, and I like the spot for him. Um, the mid-range guys in Wiggins and Draymond, I think, are pretty safe plays in a competitive game. I would expect these guys to push for you know, low to mid-30s, so Front court looks okay, but that's really about it. If Clay Thompson's out, then things change a bit. Then I like Jordan Poole. I would guess that he would move into the starting lineup. Um, I guess they could always go DiVincenzo too, but usually Poole's the guy that starts if Clay Thompson is out. He would be in play, but it's not like you're getting Poole at a cheap price point. Like he's 7.9K. So a lot of these Warriors guys are still kind of priced up from when Steph was out. So still not a ton like I love on the Golden State side, even if Clay does sit. Probably, yeah, like, a lot of these bench guys are still pricey. Like, yeah, it's just not much here for, for the Warriors that, that really, really stands out. Now, the Washington side depends on Brad Beal, right? If Brad Beal is in, I think we're all looking at tournament plays here. If Brad Beal is out, then we can look to Porzingis and Kuzma in both formats, in my opinion. Porzingis been kind of quiet of late, but we know the ceiling's there. Kuzma, can we just talk about this, man? I play him with the team to himself against Chicago, 30 fancy points. With High usage Porzingis back goes for 61. You couldn't have done that the, the, day, the day before when I played you, really. Oh. But yeah, Porzingis Kuzma obviously would look a lot better if Beals out. And then you would most likely get Kispert starting. He would be fine. He's just a low usage guy, but he would probably start and play like 25 to 30 minutes. Monte Morris, DeLon Wright, they would most likely split the guard duties. We're kind of indifferent on them. Gafford. If he can stay out of foul trouble, probably starts and plays low 20s minutes. Denny, Rui, I guess would be like playable options off the bench. But um, yeah, the main interest for me, I think, would be Porzingis and Kuzma if Beal is out of Beal's in. Again, it's a lot of just tournament plays for me. And yeah, DeLon Wright, I mentioned him, right? He'll play the backup point guard. Um, 
They'll split time with Monty Morris. He's close to the mid price, so another you know guy you can use for salary relief. Miami and Atlanta, so we do have Tyler Hero back. Um, Lowry is still out, and Martin is questionable. So I ass- we'll see what they do with the starting lineup. They can do a couple different things. They could start Hero at the point and go like Hero, Struess, Jimmy, Highsmith, Bam, or they could start um, Vincent, keep Vincent in the starting lineup and go Vincent, Hero, um, Struess, Jimmy, Bam. I think those are the two options for the starting lineup. Um, top end guys with Jimmy, Bam, and Hero. I think Bam and Hero probably look the best factoring in salary. Like the spot here for Bam and Abayo against the Hawks front court. Hero, assuming no limitations, 8.2K does feel like a decent price point for him. Jimmy's been kind of quiet of late. He'll definitely be the lowest owned, but still a guy that does provide a ceiling. With Hero back, I think Oladipo is a bit pricey at 6.1K. Not saying he's completely out of play, but... Uh, does feel a little pricey. Max Truce probably loses some minutes, but uh, he would still be playable as well. Gabe Vincent, if he comes off the bench, we probably can't do it. If he continues to start, I think he's someone who can still play. I don't think we'd expect 40 minutes, though, again from him. And then Orlando Robinson will see the backup five run. He's viable for salary relief, should see whatever Bam doesn't play, so probably like around 15 minutes. High Smith depends on Martin, I guess. Like If Martin plays, he'll, he'll start... Um, but if Highsmith does stay in the starting lineup, yes, you can consider him at 3.6. All right, Atlanta, another relatively easy team to talk about. Trey Young probable, Capella questionable. So if Capella's out, you're going to get Okongu starting and probably playing 30 plus minutes. We can stay out of foul trouble. You'll get a little bit of backup five runs for John Collins, who will look a bit better. So those two would benefit the most if Capella is out. With the guards, again, don't love the matchup for them, but they're going to play 35 to 40 minutes. Trey and Ajante Murray both look fine. Of course, Ajante Murray goes for 50 here against Toronto with Trey Young available, but team to himself against Milwaukee, you better believe he goes for 24 fancy points. Like, just wild, wild stuff there. Um, if Capella's in, obviously, we, we can't play Okongu at that price, assuming Capella starts. Uh, but Donovich is 5'6". Feels a little bit pricey right now for his role. DeAndre Hunter, it's not like a super exciting play, but he's playing a lot of minutes. He's playing like 35 minutes a game. So I think he's a relatively safe value for that reason of like, you're going to get big minutes from him as long as he stays out of foul trouble. You'll probably see rotation minutes for AJ Griffin and Jalen Johnson. Um, they're both cheap. If you want to take a shot on one of those guys in tournaments? Sure, uh, you can. All right, and finish up with Utah and Minnesota. On the Utah side, Lori Markinen is questionable. So that is big, big news. If Markkinen is out, then we get Jordan Clarkson becoming the clear go-to guy. Went from 57 fans points last game, so I would really like Clarkson if Markkinen's out. Mike Conley would look better. Um, I think he'd be a pretty good play in the mid-range. And then you just get more run for guys like Beasley and uh, THT, probably Sexton as well. So this whole team will look a lot better if Markkinen is out. Um, Walker Kessler is going to start at the five. He's probably going to play around 30 minutes if he can stay out of foul trouble. So I like Walker Kessler. Vanderbilt should see low to mid-20s minutes. If Kessler gets in foul trouble, he probably benefits. And then if Markkinen plays, I think Markkinen is a bit pricey. Wouldn't be out of play, but would be a bit pricey. And then Clarkson, like basically everyone else in Utah kind of be secondary plays. THT would be very risky. He had a good game off the bench last game in 28 minutes. Um, but yeah, if Markkinen's out, I'd feel better about his minutes. And then I mentioned Sexton, right? He should see low 20s minutes off the bench. He has only 4.2K and does have that shooting guard eligibility. So... Uh, Utah, actually a relatively appealing team. They're going to look a lot better if Markkinen is out. And finally, Minnesota. So Minnesota, we have Ant questionable. We have Gobert questionable. And we have Torian Prince questionable. Now, Gobert left last game and did not return. So I would think he's more on the doubtful side. We'll see, though. Anthony Edwards has been questionable over the last couple games. He has played. So I'm assuming he will play. And assuming he does, um, I like the price of Ant-Man quite a bit. I'm not sure why the price went down. He was like... Been in this 9K range for a long time, and now he's 8.3. So, assuming he plays, I like Anthony Edwards a good amount. DeAndre Russell only played 21 minutes last game because he really, really struggled. More often than not, though, he's seeing 30-plus minutes, um, like his ceiling, assuming those minutes are there. And then if Gobert is out, obviously Nas Reed's going to look phenomenal here at 4.9K. He would start, probably play 30-plus minutes. Great point per minute guy. You get a combination, most likely, of Nathan Knight, Luca Garza backing up. Um... Nas Reed, um, if you want to take a shot. It was Luca Garza for what it's worth last game. He played 10 minutes after Gobert went down. So wanted to mention that. And then the wings, slow-mo McDaniels, yeah, like they're they're both fair plays. I don't love them, don't hate them, but they're fine filler options. McDaniels is a bit foul prone, but the wings are totally fine. Noel at 4-4. The minutes haven't been great on him. 
Um, but he did play a bit la- more last game because DeAndre Russell got benched. That's probably it. Don't think we can get to Austin Rivers. So, um, yeah, keep an eye on Ant. Keep an eye on Gobert. Keep an eye on Prince. I, I think Gobert probably more so on the doubtful side. Anthony Edwards probably more so on the probable side. So, that'll do it for the video, guys. Uh, really appreciate you guys for watching. Again, if you do enjoy it, just make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.